Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our online church family as well as our family that is here. We are going to be talking about our family tree. How many people think family is a big, 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 important thing? Let me say that again. How many people <laughs> think, yeah, I heard about three people go, yeah, yeah. No, I know you think it's a big deal. It's important, man. It's great. And, you know, I also know this, that sometimes in our family tree, we got some low-hanging branches. Amen? <laughs> right? We got, some, we got some bugs on our leaves sometimes. We got some knot holes on there, right? I said knot holes, okay? And there's trees and barks and things like that. So, you know, guess what? All of us, all of us uh, are unique. How about that? We just say we're unique. So I was thinking about that this week, especially going into Father's Day, and I want to uh, just say again, uh, man, dads uh, and folks filling in as dads, happy Father's Day. And what a privilege it is to be a dad. I want to tell you. You remind me of that when things get tough, right? It's a privilege, right? <laughs> but no, it is a privilege and it's a blessing. And today uh, and every day, we should be looking to our Heavenly Father to just honor Him. So I want to talk a little bit about the family tree. And, and, and you know, it's pretty amazing that, especially in Bacosan, it's very close to West Virginia, evidently, because everybody's related. It's just related. You know, and somebody said, oh, my, it's, this is what I see sometimes. Somebody say, oh, my cousin goes to your church. I said, I bet they do. I bet they do. And I'm just trying to figure out what's, you know, okay, where is it all working? But here's the thing. When you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and you've called on the name of Jesus, put your faith in trust in the finished work of the cross, you are in God's family. Somebody say amen about that. So you know what? That's a big family. That's awesome. So I wanted to look at a few things. And, I, and we really, we like to belong. How many people like to belong? We just wired to belong. We like to fit in and all that stuff. But sometimes we go about it the wrong way, don't we? Instead of, you know, sometimes we're following the crowd when we should be following the who? The Lord. Amen. And so I hope today as we go through the word of God that we'll see all that. Tim, is, all, is that the extra for that? I have no idea what that's doing over there. And Thomas is not here. And so. Okay, take, take the one on the right. Hello. One on the right, turn it down. All the way down. Let's see what happens when I do this. Presto, change. It's your wand. It was a, so, hey, we're just, we're coming out that side, right? We are still coming out that side? See what y'all miss by just staying at home? <laughs> You're probably going, I think he's going down. Anyway. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, I was always like, gosh, if we're doing stuff live and something happens, guess what? It did. <laughs> God's good in the midst of that, man. And that's kind of like, hey, you know what? I like to see when that does happen. That's what happens every Sunday morning when we come in here. Everything's good. But you know what? Just keep on smiling, man. God's got a bigger plan. That's all right. If we had to, if we had to praise him by candlelight, that's all right, right? Amen. As long as you don't turn off the air conditioning. No. <laughs> it was, I can go with the candlelight, but I got to have the AC. <laughs> all right. Now that we got all the bugs out of the way, we were talking about family. And I got to look it around because you, how many people see those, those TV commercials about people, you know, where, where they're from? Everybody wants to know where they're from. I was looking at, you know, they do a lot of family tree searching. So I put this in and did Google it. They got Ancestry.com. They got Family Tree Magazine. They got Archives.com. FamilySearch.org. You ready for this? Find a Grave. Findagrave.com. And then they got FindMyPast.com. I didn't want to click on that one. I don't know about you. I don't need to know about my past. I already lived it. I don't want to relive it. Amen. Most of it. I mean, there were some good things in there. But I think the biggest thing is what can you glean from those times. Amen. So, you know, you got all that and you see that and people like to belong. But something I saw looking all this up about your family tree. I never saw this advertised. Never saw it on Google about your family tree. Nobody said look in the Bible. Amen. You want to know about your family tree. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to look in the Bible to see what God says about that. And you know what I love about the, the, the genealogy and everything of Jesus? When they write everything out, they didn't skip over Uncle Joe or this guy or this thing, because, you know, you, how many people got that crazy uncle? I'm glad my niece and nephew's not here today. They'd be going, it's you. You know, you always kind of, yeah, yeah, you know, oh, you know, Bobby, you know, Jimmy, you know, you know, but, oh, you know, but, you know, God is so awesome and so gracious. He wants to show us how we fit in. I mean, you look back through there. How many people know when you read through the Bible, there's a few people that just missed the mark just a little bit, amen? Everybody but Jesus, amen? So we're in good company. We're in good company, man. Think about that. You go back, Adam. Let's just start right there, Cain and Abel. You can walk all through that. 
And to me, when I see those things, it's encouraging. Why? Because I know I'm not the only bump on the log, amen? I know I'm not the only bad, low-hanging hanging fruit there. But, you know, God decides to show the whole picture and love us through that. And I think that's the amazing thing about the Bible and what God shows us about his love for us and his grace and mercy for us, that he loves you so much he will take you right the way you are. Somebody say amen. Right the way you are. Now, religion, which we don't have here, we have a relationship with the Lord. Religion says you've got to clean up, got to fix up, smell better, put money in a pot and all that stuff, all those different things, before somebody would accept you. Notice I said somebody, not Jesus. He said, I'll take you right where you are. He sees your best on your worst day. Man, now that's love, isn't it? Anybody ever had a real bad day that you don't even like yourself? <laughs> Glad y'all weren't here early. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I can't believe this stuff, you know? It starts wearing on you just a little bit. You know why? Because you want everything to be right. You want it to be good. You want, you know, you work on a message all week. You're praying about it. You're like, man, Lord, we're going to stomp on the devil today. And then he starts rearing his head, you know? But that's all right. And in the midst of that, you know what? This is kind of just, just a little side note. In the midst of that, I was like this morning, everything was just doing like it normally does. This doesn't work. This uh, change cord and all this stuff. And I was like, man. And Tanya said, you can just find something positive. And so I reached through my little bag back there, and I found my favorite flashlight that I thought I had lost like three months ago. And I was like, yes, I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to focus on this. Focus on being the light in the darkness, amen? See, there's a sermon in everything we do. You know, I'm thinking, wow, isn't that amazing? God would, would, would take the time and say, hey, it's over here. It's over there. Sometimes it's the little things in life that we need to focus back on to bring back that joy in our life. We get overwhelmed by all the different things going on, and the picture gets bigger, and it gets darker, and, and this is happening, and then your so-called friends want to tell you all the things you've done wrong. Anybody got some friends like that? Keep moving. Amen? <laughs> you got, cause you, why is that? If you're my friend, tell me that I did something good, you know? But I want to tell you what. God always sees the best in us. So look back at this. We're looking at the Bible. And today, I hope we can look at a few things today. I want to look at a couple of odds and ends. Uh, who I am, whose I am, and where am I headed? So if you've got your notes and stuff with you today, uh, we're going to talk about this. I started out with our scripture today for Proverbs 1.8, and it says, Listen, my son, to your father's instructions, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. That would be a real good one to get in your heart early. Amen? And notice, and you hear me preach on this all the time, the difference of hearing and listening. Man, I heard a lot of stuff my dad said. And just kept on walking. I'm thinking, I should have listened more. Should have listened more. And so look at that. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your, your mother's teaching. It's a teen thing. Mom's got something to bring to the table, too, amen? Somebody say amen. I'm trying to help out the ladies today. I don't tell you what, you know? And boys, I don't know what it is. I guess it's everybody, but boys love their mama. I am a mama's boy. I'm going to tell you that right now. I am. Even in the neighborhood where I grew up, we get ready to leave for school. I don't care, 16, 17 years old, walking and everything else. And he said, and mom, mom be out there like this. And, you know, you think the guy said, oh, you ain't got to go kiss him. Everybody be like, you better go kiss your mama before you leave. You know, that's, that's it. Respect. Love them, man. In, uh, hey, outside of the Lord, I don't know if everybody's going to love you all the time, but your mama will, amen. <laughs> I'm just telling you. We will too. But you know what? I just want to say today that, you know what? There's so many parents doing double duty, you know? Dad's doubling for moms and moms doubling for dads. But as a church, we can come along and help point those youngsters to the Lord as a family because that's the family tree that you have. So I'm going back to this a little bit here. And I, I was also thinking about some of the commercials that people want to know about their, their, their heritage. You know, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's good. I saw one commercial, the guy bought a bunch of bagpipes, and then he did a DNA sample, and he had to trade them in for a conga. What's up with that? Did y'all see that commercial, something like that? Oh, I, oh, oh, that's not really me. You know, I'll tell you who really you are. You are the one that God says you are in his word. Amen? Not, not the neighbors, not your boss, not your date, the Lord. And so I hope that is encouraging today, because I'm going to tell you what. We see that God uses anybody and everybody, and I guess you figured that out when you see me up here. Amen? So here's the question. Who are you going to listen to? Mm, preaching to somebody today, just me? Who are we going to listen to? Are we going to listen to the ways of the world? Because that volume gets loud. 
volume get loud now? Are we going to listen to uh, Oprah, <laughs> Dr. Phil? I mean, are we going to go back and flip open the Bible and say, well, what did God say about that? He created the universe. He knew you from the very beginning. I think he's probably got a pretty good track record. How about you guys? So the question is, what are we listening to? And the next thing is this. Continue to lean in to the word of God. So again, the three questions I want you to kind of frame around your heart as we go in today. Who am I, right? Whose am I, and where am I going? Everybody doing good? I'm going to give us a little of God's word on here in just a second, get this thing geared up. So we're going to start out with who am I? And I, I have a little intro here. I said, if I asked you who you are, what would your response be? Have you ever done that? Now, this is what usually happens. A lot of people are defined by their occupation. They'll say, well, who are you? Or you go to a party, you go somewhere, you meet somebody, right? What do they usually say? Oh, what type of work do you do? And you don't realize this a lot of times, but I love to watch people. And I watch people's faces, and I'm watching all the time. And it's something, because some people should never play poker, amen? Because as soon as they say, well, where did you grow up? I said, I grew up in Buck Road. They go, oh, okay. <laughs> they start moving stuff around in their house and everything, locking stuff, you know? <laughs> I ain't kidding, man. When I, I had some friends, uh, I went to, went to church with them last week, they, uh, Ron and Sandy, and, and it's kind of funny. They lived on the same street. They, uh, they sent me a note, and I saw they lived on the same street that I lived on. But I lived at 9. They lived at 310. <laughs> there is a world change between 9 and 310. And I remember we had a, a business one time, me and my buddy. I've been in all types of business. I ain't even got no business sense, but I've been in some business. We had a business where we did all the deliveries for three of the mattress discounter stores. Amen. I have been in all types of houses, up all types of steps, seen all kinds of things that I don't even want to see. You don't know what people have under their bed. I'm telling you, it's, you're like, you knew I was coming. So we went, and, and you know, what's, what is this, you know, all types of crazy stuff, you know. And I remember going on the same street with some different folks, and we went down there, and I was delivering some stuff. And I told the lady, I said, oh, I'm your neighbor. She said, oh, you're my neighbor? I said, yeah. I said, it's a little side job, me and my buddy. Did. Oh, that's good. That's great. She said, well, where do you live at? I said, well, I live down there. She goes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we try to size people up. We try to size people up from where they live, what they drive. You know what I'm saying? Is it true? Some on, you know people do that. I know y'all don't do that, <laughs> Right? But people do that. What happens if we had the eyes of Christ when we looked at somebody and said, man, you know what, they're amazing. You know why? Because they are God's child. God created it. God has something great for them to do. God has something great for them to accomplish. So a lot of times we're defined by our occupation. And, and so, you know, some may reply and identify with this and, 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 and see what's going on. You see where I'm going with this. And it doesn't mean, you know, if they say, well, what do you do? Well, usually what I tell them is this. I preach at a church. See, that's a privilege to me. You know, I've been, do, I've been working on the wind tunnel for 32 years. You know what I talk about? I talk about Jesus. Amen. That's great if they went to the moon and all that, and I appreciate my job and everything else. But I want them to know the thing that will transform their life. Because that's just a doorway so I can tell them about the grace of God. So what else? Some people are defined by their achievements. Amen. You can tell. You know, you go in their office, and they've got everything, even their spelling bee thing when they got it in the third grade up on there. You know, oh, I see you spelled Mississippi. <laughs> That's one. You know, I know you're 50 years old now, but we, we want to, <laughs> amen. We want to turn around and, and look at me. Look at me. Sometimes that's just crazy that we just get so about ourselves. What happens if we would look outward instead of inward sometimes? Look at others and look how God's working in their life. Now, here's one. I'm going to speak to everybody now. It's going to hit you wherever you're at today. I'm going to get you with this, okay? This is, the, this is it. How about some people are defined by their failures? Come on now. Ain't that the truth, bro? They just read. They play it backwards. Play, it's on the tape. Play, loop back, play back, play back. But I should have never and did that. And then all you need is a couple other people to say, to help remind you of that. What happens if you surrounded yourself with people that love you and they reminded you of all the good in your life? Man, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be amazing? You know, so many times we find out everything we can't do or what we should have done. I know when I came to the Lord, I did not have any problem with this thing right here. 
All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I didn't even know that scripture, but I knew I fit the bill. I didn't need to know any more about my sin. Now, some people may, right? I needed to know what was the remedy. I had the sin part down. I want to know what's the remedy. Y'all know the remedy? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And let me tell you this. Every time that I get the privilege of coming here or speaking anywhere else, I get tickled. I get so excited. I guess you see that. Even when we, Tanya was praying, I was saying, don't talk too fast. Don't talk too fast. Then I was going, I'm excited. Don't talk too fast, right? But then I just say, Lord, supernaturally slow it down so they can hear it. It is a privilege to speak the word of God. And everybody has that privilege. But so many people don't take advantage of that privilege. Some people will turn around and constantly rehearse the hurt of their failures. Amen? I'm not minimizing that. I'm saying, why in the world keep telling it over and over and over and over? You know, can you imagine if I flunked the test in the third grade and I'm still talking about it? You say, well, that would be crazy. Well, there's things that happen in people's life that they just continue to over and over. I'm not minimizing some of the things that people have been through. What I want to do is maximize the grace and the redemption power, restoration power of God. I don't want to be the same guy I used to be, you know? And not even today. Tomorrow, I want to grow more in grace. I want to grow more in, in the, the wisdom and knowledge of God. I want to be a difference maker. How about you? I want, when I leave this place, I want to say, I don't know the guy's name, but man, he, he loved the Lord. Well, you know what? You know, that guy told me about Jesus. Because you know what? When you leave, you can't take anything with you except one thing. You might be able to bring some people to the Lord along the way, but ultimately God's going to do the work. But are you willing to be that person i hope that you are i know that you are so don't let your failures define you let the word of god define you here's something else sometimes we're defined by others i talked about that a little bit oh you know such and such he never does that you know sally sue she never finishes that you know things like that if you're around somebody like that keep moving keep moving because guess what's going to happen when you leave they're going to say the same thing about you to the next person probably amen so just keep on moving keep on moving you ain't got to be rude i said well you know surely there's got to be one good thing that, about jim or john or sally or susie there's got to be one good thing now i was thinking about this my dad taught me a lot and my mom taught me a lot of stuff my dad taught me a lot about uh i don't know working on stuff respecting people know how to treat your wife and sometimes i, I, I forget about that so in about the last six or eight months then he said, what's wrong with you? I said, what do you mean? She said, you've never opened a car door for me this much until here lately. Did you buy something else? <laughs> no, I didn't. But I think about those things. So when I go out, I was like, hey, baby, come on. Come on, come on. Here you go. Here you go. Now, if it's raining, she's on her own. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. Well, it should be because she will take your eye out with that umbrella. She's got an umbrella, and she's got different sizes umbrellas per storm. A little storm, like this. I can't fit under it anyway. I'm like hanging out. You know, my love handle's getting soaked over there. I said, just, just go ahead. I'll, I'll rough it, baby. And then she goes, wait a minute. I got to get in there. And the whole time she's trying to get in there, it's raining even more. And she's doing it. I thought, you could have just run and got in here. It'd been a whole lot better off. And then I got to get this. I got to get this up. A lot of times we think we got to get everything right. You know, it ain't going to hurt to run through the water a little bit. And it doesn't hurt to respect people and love them like God tells us to love them. Amen? So just a little side note. So we can be defined by others. Something I wrote the other day, the Lord showed this to me in the midst of one of the live streams. I said, we often give others too much real estate in our heart. I thought, man, that was good. I need to write that down, Lord. What do you mean by that? We give some folks too much real estate in our heart. We allow them too much impact in our life when they're spreading hate and discontent. Amen. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. How about you guys? I'm not saying we just, oh, you can't talk to me unless everything's good. What I'm saying is, look, you got to guard your heart. And if you don't, it will fill up so much with that negative stuff that you won't have much room for God. Now, let's flip the script. What happens if we filled up on all the good stuff? If we filled up on what God's saying about us? Man, I bet you, I bet you blood pressure go down. I bet you smile a little bit more. I bet you'd probably have a little bit better time. I bet you your family would appreciate it. Your family tree would. 
Try that. Try that this week. Take a look at that. So that's what I'm talking about. Fill your heart with God's word. And this is what I was talking about here. I said, you know, God's word is so reliable, it's true. It brings correction, wisdom, and healing. And I said, you know, uh, dads, are, uh, what are we teaching our children? Are we teaching them th- the things of God? Are you deliberate in taking action in your children's life about teaching them the word of God? You know what I've heard over the years? I invite people to church all the time. I know you guys too, do too. And, and I've had people later on when their kids are 16, 17, 18 years old, and they go, man, can you talk to my, my kids? Can you help me? Sure, I'd be glad to talk to them. And I said, well, you know, do y'all go to church? Y'all plug in and this and Well, I wanted them to find their own way. I didn't want, I'm like, well, tell me what that is in the Bible. Where does it say? Church. Thou should let them fend for themselves, and let's just hope they make it. I didn't see that part, did y'all? We, as dads, I'm talking to dads first. Mama, you coming too, so watch your toes, right? Dads, we, we says, look, as the, as the man has, we need to be speaking into their life. We're supposed to be the head, right? But you know what? The wife is the neck that turns the head. I'm just going to let you all know that real fast, amen? <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right there. But anyway, we have responsibilities as dads to teach in the Word of God. You know what? It don't take but about one generation to boot God out. You look back through the, through the scriptures, over and over. When, when you grew up, and I'm just not even in my notes, but, but in biblical times coming on through, if your dad was a, a sheep herder, guess what you were? You was a sheep herder. If you were cutting stone, that's what you did. If you were carpenter, that's what you did. He taught you. He taught you. He trained you. Just sitting there thinking about your life, man, how your dad showed you with the boats and different things. You look back at different things. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only thing you can do. You know? Somebody's got to be a doctor. Somebody's got to do something, you know what I mean? But here, as dads, are we fanning the flames of faith for our children to give them a foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that world gets busy, amen? And I'm going to tell you what. They're not going to teach them in college that, amen? I do, most of the counseling that I do in talking to people are kids that after the first year coming back from college. And the moms and dads are about to pull their hair out. And then they want to debate everything. Not all of them, but many of them do. I'm not going to finance my kids' destruction. Amen? I know that's not all the cases, but many of the cases they are in different universities, different things out there. They're not teaching you about Jesus. Amen? They're teaching you about everything else, right? So if they don't have the foundation, when somebody says something, they don't know. They go, oh, oh, okay. Let's get that foundation in our children as soon as we can. Amen? God is counting on us to do it. Amen? I just want to share that with you. And you say, well, gosh, my kids are already growing. Well, love them to the Lord now. You just don't throw your hands up. Does Jesus just go, oh, man, you're out. He just keeps on loving us. He'll dust us off, get us back in. You know, come on. And then you do the same crazy thing again. What does he say? You do that one more time, you're out, right? He didn't say that. Come on back to me. Come on back to me. Come on back to me. And so, Lord, help us to, to be a mirror of Christ to, the Lord, to, to others and show them the Lord. And so now, with that being said, this right here, I'm going to bring a little bit of scripture in to encourage you. Anybody want to be encouraged today? I got the word of God behind us here. Let's bring it. And bring it. Ooh, I'm going to do all of them so we can go through this. How about that? Help me out, Tim. Can you bring them all the way down there? I'm still clicking. I'm going to start through here. Let's take a look at the first one, all right? I want to read through some of these. And, and these are just a few of who your Heavenly Father say you are and what you have when you have called on the name of Jesus, put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross. This is for you. Let me just tell you, this is not for you if you have not put your faith and trust in the Lord. Amen? I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but let's take a look at this. All right, if you know the Lord, say amen. All right, look at this here. It says, I am God's child, for I am born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, which lives and abides forever. 1 Peter 1, uh, 1 Peter 1, 23. And I'll go through these and we'll come back a little bit. I am God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Ephesians 2.10. Anybody feeling better about yourself already? Come on, I got it coming on. I'm a new creature in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Somebody say, I claim that in Jesus' name, amen. Philippians 4.7. I am a believer in the light of the gospel shines in my mind, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Here we go. I am a doer of the word and blessed in my actions, James 1.22 and 25. I am a joint heir with Christ, Romans 8, 17. 
I got some more. Let's just talk about that. Now, we like, as dads and moms and family who love one another, we like to, we think when we leave here, we like to make it a little bit better for our family, don't we? Man, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad y'all are worried about that. They go, no, they on their own. No, we like, <laughs> we like to, to make sure it might be a little bit easier on them, try to help them, leave a little bit of a legacy behind. But here's the thing. See if this is going to come out the way I, I got it in my head here. It probably shouldn't be as much as what we're leaving them with as much as it is what are we equipping them with to go into the future. Did that come out right? Are we equipping our children with the word of God, with the love of God, with the mercy and the peace and the grace of God, understanding, balancing that out, that there's wrath of God, right? But there's grace of God, and there's only one way to heaven, and his name is Jesus. You see what I'm saying? And look at this. It says, you know what? Uh, where were we at? He says, uh, I am a joint heir with Christ. We can't come up short with Jesus, can we? They can take everything else away, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I want all my things are taken away, but I'm going to tell you this. There's been times in my life that I thought everything was stripped away. You let a health issue come in your life, and they don't know what it is, you'll feel like everything you got is stripped away. You go through a terrible divorce and see what happens, you'll think everything's stripped away. You got a sick child, you'll think everything's stripped away. You say, man, I thought this was going to be uplifting. Sometimes we have to look where we were to see where God has brought us so we understand the power of the gospel, amen? So we see the grace of God, that he'll never leave you or forsake you, amen? All right, let's keep on going. I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me, Romans 8, 37. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony, Revelations 12, 11. I'm alive with Christ, Ephesians 2, 5. How many people see people that are Christians and they're like this? How you doing? Mm -hmm. Man, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be excited about that. Every now and then, it's just really, really good to study on hell. What are you talking about? Yeah, there's a place called hell. And guess what? You don't have to go there because Jesus made a way for us not to have to go. Let me tell you, anybody ever, ever been in a bad spot and get out just by the skin of their teeth? Whoo! A heart's beating like this. You're all thankful for about 30 seconds, then you go back doing what you've been doing, right? Think about this. The Lord Jesus Christ has rescued us out of the darkness and set us into this family of the light of the Lord. Not just one time. Not just, just you know, you just barely made it here. You know what? He did it once for all. You are secure in Christ. Amen? You're secure in Christ when you grab hold of the gospel message by faith. Amen? All right? It says, I'm alive in Christ. I'm free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. How about this? I am an ambassador for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. What does that mean, ambassador? When you go somewhere, they're a representative of that country. How good are we representing Jesus? Quiet. Kind of quiet. Some days, it's much better than others. Some days, I go, oh, I must be off today. Right? <laughs> But you know what? God is willing for us to start again fresh. I want you all to hear that. God is willing to give you a fresh start when you need it. Amen? So there's a, there's a whole lot of different things that I, I want to cram in here. The other day I was at work and I was talking to one of my friends and I said, man, tell me what the Lord's showing you. And I love to hear immediately said, to be the light. I said, that's good. He said, I've been thinking all week. He said, his church has something really cool. He said, this week on our church Facebook page, he said, all the folks were encouraged to write down a life lesson or something that their dad taught them. I thought, how much room, how many gigabytes do they got? And I start thinking, you know, I thought, that's pretty cool. And I thought, well, how do I write just one? How do I write just one? My dad showed me a lot of stuff. I can hear him when I'm putting a wrench on. Hey, lefty tighty, righty loosey, get that thing tight, boy. I can hear all that stuff. All those different things. So I said, well, what, what's the best thing? What's the best thing when I was writing this? Guess this. And it came back just as clear as a bell. You know the best, I want y'all to lean in here. You know the best news my dad ever gave me. You ready? Y'all ready? Drum roll. Seek the Lord, son. Seek the Lord. See, let me tell you something. My dad knew about God, but my dad didn't get saved till later. But when my dad got saved, it transformed his life. Everything. So it was the focus of what he was teaching me. And I was older. I got saved before my dad. And at first he's like, you're teaching me all this stuff. I should have been teaching you. 
I said, well, what's this double teaming? You know? But man, he'd get out in his garage and he'd read the word, he'd even write stuff down. And he, he'd, he'd call me, ask some questions. What do you think about that? I said, I never thought about that, Dad. All that. The best advice my dad ever gave me is to seek the Lord, to trust the Lord. He said, son, if it's the Lord's will, it's going to work out. He's got the big picture. You know? And I'm thinking, who is this man? Because before it would be, you know, you better do right. You better get this thing going on. I told you not to do that. Man, when God got a hold of his life, it changed his heart. He was a nice guy. But man, the love of Christ was starting to flow out. And the wisdom of God was starting to flow out of that. And I'm like, man. So if I could tell anybody anything to right now, to, to, to put in their heart, seek the Lord, man. Seek the Lord. Now, I know that everybody's dad here don't always measure up. I'm the first guy I'm talking to right here. Miss the mark, everything else. I'm here to tell you if that's, a, that's the case, don't beat your dad down. Look up to your heavenly father. Your heavenly father has got more than enough. He loves you. He'll speak into your life. He'll heal things. He'll heal the inside. He'll heal those relationships. You say, well, it's probably just too late. It's never too late. Even if they're gone, you know what? Forgive them and trust God. You hear me? I, I don't know who I'm preaching to today. Probably me. So I'm gonna forgive them, trust God, and let God work that out. Don't let past, like we talked in that other thing, the past things shackle you to misery. Let today, the future, right now, right here, lift you up. Look at this, man. Look at these things right here. This is who you are. This is, this is where we need to be going, not Ancestry.com, right? If you really want to know the heart of it, I think it's great if you want to find out where your grandma was born or whatever. That's, I'm not saying there's a problem with that. I'm saying this right here, this is what, this is what I'm going to take to the hospital room. This is what I'm going to take when they give me the bad news. This is what I want to know when they say, hey, we don't need you no more at work. See? That's what, that's what I want right there. So I got a foundation in the truth of God's word. I want to share it with you, amen? Because guess what? In our family tree, that's for you. Somebody say amen if they're excited about that. Man, so when you know who you are, and then you know what? Whose you are. Whose I am. And that don't even sound right, but I think that's the best way to say it. Y'all know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to give you a little bit of Bible verses here. If you don't get a chance to write all these down, just write down uh, the verse and come back and, and, and you know, go over that. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe in his name. Look at what God offers. He desires for us to be in his family tree. But you have to receive it. Many folks think that the promises in the Bible are for them. I want you to hear that. I started on that earlier. He said, oh, that's, that's for everybody. It's for everybody that's called upon the name of the Lord. It's for people that's put their faith and trust in the finished work of the cross. If not, you have rejected God. These promises are not for you. They're available to you, but you've got to claim them by faith. I hope that came out right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So people think, oh, yeah, everybody's going to heaven. No, everybody is not going to heaven. The ones that called on the name of Jesus, the one that put their faith and trust in the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, putting our faith in that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Not just because you went by a church, not because your grandma was playing the piano at church. It's a personal relationship. But when you have that relationship, look what you got. Look at this, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by what? Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Man, Paul understood that connection. You talk about somebody who was far off, Paul was far off, right? He was holding, he was holding the, the, the coats while they were stoning Stephen. He was going out, he said, man, pick me, come on, I'll go in there and I'll drag those Christians out. Come on, give me the word, Right? You can be zealous and have the wrong message and be way out of whack. So look at that. But look what happened when he had an encounter with Christ. Let's read it again. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Man, he had that connection down. He said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He was saying he lived by faith. Do you really believe whose you are? Do you really believe that? Because if you do, it will change everything in your life, in your family, how you spend your money, how you 
shop at the grocery store, how you sing, how you do. What do you mean by this? Because it changes our whole heartitude. That just came to me. Is that a word? I don't know. It changes our whole heart about what's going on because we know whose we are. Amen? That's amazing. Let's keep on going. Philippians 1, 6. For I am confident of this thing, this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of, of Christ Jesus. You ever feel like, man, I, I'm just spent. I'm just done. Anybody had a day like my yesterday? Everything I did, I did at least twice. How about that? Couldn't even get the trailer hooked up right yesterday. Banging and clanging and all that. And then I said, well, we're going to go get something to eat. I'll come back and do it. So what I do is I go get something to eat. It stops raining. I come back to do it. It's pouring. You ever a day like that? Sometimes you just have to laugh. I go, Lord, what are you showing me? What are you teaching me? <laughs> that could be a long conversation. But those things happen to all of us. See, I think sometimes we say, oh, the preachers don't have no problem. Oh, look at that. Man, everybody's walking through this thing. But what happens is when, when we pull together as a family and we look back through that family tree and say, this is who I am. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in me, right, and you, will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Man, that means I don't have to quit. I'm going to keep going. God's on the throne. Jesus is sitting at the right-hand side of God saying, you know what, we, we're going to pick him up again, Dad. Thank you, Lord. Keep on going. Anybody else excited about these scriptures? Because I know I am. Let's keep on rolling. How about this? Proverbs 14, 26. In the, fear, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence in his children shall have a place of refuge. Let's look at this. When we're talking about the fear. A lot of times we're talking about the reverence. We need to have a fear of the Lord, the reverence. I'm not talking about a fear like, oh, Lord. But I'm going to tell you what. When we see how awesome and amazing in the presence of God pours out on us, man, let me tell you. You're going to find out he's God and you're not. Amen? And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be an amazing thing. We talk about it many times. Scott's a pretty big guy. I heard he was a pretty tough guy. I don't know who cries more, me or Scott, when we talk about the Lord. You know? Because why? It's a heart transformation. When you start thinking about what God has done in your life, I don't even, I can't even, I, you just see, I start going, my voice starts going higher and I start fanning myself like this. Oh, he's on a roll now. Because what happens is the presence of God starts bubbling up in my life, and I go, Lord, you are so good. You are so amazing. You are so gracious to us all. But you know what? If you don't receive that, if you don't walk in that, you'll sit there and live a life sitting on your, your hands and being miserable. I say this many times. Sometimes it's good to let your eyes leak and to keep your head from swelling. Amen? <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't care don't care. Let me, that guy's crying there. Yeah, that's right. Jesus is good. And I'm going to tell you, let me tell you what he's done for me. My buddy told me this years ago, I say it almost every week, no one can argue with a changed life. How are you going to change that? What? I have people say, I had a guy, how are we looking? Oh, the buffet's still open. We're all right. I had a guy one time, and I mentioned this one time, I had to go to a lawyer because of a situation and, and and uh, I had hurt my arm, and they didn't want to pay for this, and blah, blah, blah. The bottom line is this. I was talking to the lawyer, and, and he said, man, we're going to get this. I said, hold, 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 look. I just want them to take care of what they need to take care of. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I said, look, now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm praying for the Lord to heal me and get this thing squared away, and you're cussing him. So this is the plan. If you want the case, you got to stop it. And if you say one bad word and we do get a settlement, whatever we get on your side, you can put in the ministry. He goes. He said, you don't cuss? I said, I try not to. He said, how'd you quit? I mean, this guy, this guy, we were in the high rise. He was, oh, man, I'll tell you, we're doing this, man. He got the rings on us. I said, oh, I don't care about that stuff. I just want everything to be smooth. The bigger thing out of that whole deal is I got to share Jesus with this man. And he got to see something different. He told me, he says, you know what? I, 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 I don't understand. And I said, this is where I was. This is where I'm going. This is what God's done in my life. And I'm on Team Jesus. So if you want to jump over with me, we got to be on the same sheet. 
You know what? I don't think anybody had ever shared that message with that man. Now, you know what? That's the way it worked, and that's the way it was. But the biggest thing was this. Before I go into any business thing or any deal or whatever, I want to talk about Jesus. I want to know my number one partner is the Lord, amen? And so I'm not going in partners with somebody that's, that's not on the same sheet, okay? You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but I'm going to tell you, if I got a choice, we're going to be in it with Jesus, amen? I don't know why I'm even bringing that up. Maybe somebody's thinking about a business deal or whatever like that. Make sure that you believe the same thing. Make sure that Jesus Christ is, is the Lord of their life. Amen? Sometimes you, you can't always go with that. I'm not saying I'm only going to deal with Christians. You might be the only light that they see. Amen? You might be that person say, hey, well, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to do that business deal like that. I'm not going to do this. And this is why. That's another platform that God gives us. Amen? don't want to get too sidetracked there. But I want you to see this. The whole thing is, at the bottom line of that, it says, and his children shall have a place of refuge. What do you mean? Refuge. A safe place of protection. I wasn't worried about anything else after that. I was like, well, you know what? I've already prayed about this. I'm good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. Well, you're not concerned about this? Nope. Well, what happens if... Nope. I already prayed about it. God's going to handle this thing, and I'm going to see it through. But what if... And there's no buts. I'm going to trust God in this situation, and we're going to go with God says. Is it easy? Not normally. But when you have that peace that passes all understanding, you just say, well, I don't know how it's going to work out, but God will work it out. That's a great place to be, isn't it? When we're in the center of God's will, guess what? There's no worry. There's no fear. There's none of these things. It is a peaceful refuge, and you keep on going. I pray that when you go through a tough time, that you know what? That God carries you through that. We were created for fellowship. I said, the scripture says his children have a place of refuge. It means protection, safe haven, shelter. He's our heavenly father. You're safe with God. You're protected. Your eternity is secure with God. Anybody excited about that? Wouldn't it be something if you, oh, maybe I'm in, maybe I'm out. Maybe I'm in, maybe I'm out. No, that's not what he said. I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit here. So now that we know who we are and whose we are, where are we going? Let's take a look at that. Where are we going? When you know who you are and whose you are, it helps us find our way. Let's take a look at this. Give you a lot of scripture today because you know why? That is the anchor to our soul and our spirit. Take a look at this. Psalm 16, 8. I set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand and I will not be shaken. I got a lot of scriptures in here today talking about being shaken. You ever feel like the world's about just to shake you loose? You ever get on that that merry-go-round thing like that, and it's just pulling like this, man, you're pulling G's and stuff. Sometimes life can be like that. You ever feel like everybody is pulling on you for the answer? Sometimes I get home, Denise says, you look like you've been through, I say, I feel like roadkill today. I feel like that buzz had been picking on me. Hey, can you, buddy, can you do that? Hey, buddy, can you do that? What about this, buddy? buddy, 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 buddy. And I go, whoa, Lord, I need to hear from you. Here's something that the Lord showed me. We're not much good to anyone else if we're not getting filled up on the good stuff of God. We got to, we got to start there, guys. We got to start there. We can't pour out what we don't drink in. We have to drink it in, right? Make time. Take time. Look at this. This is what the psalmist says. I have set the Lord continually before me. He's saying, I'm making an effort that God is first in my life. What would happen if you start your day like that? Well, I do. I pray on the way to work. And I, no, I'm talking about, look what he says. I have set the Lord continually before me. You know what that means to me? I ain't changing. No detour. God said it. I believe it. I don't see it right now. I don't care what the neighbors say. I don't care what CNN's putting on there or what the other thing. God said this, and I'm going to go with that. Woo. Is that bold? Where do we get boldness from? The Holy Spirit that dwells in us. But if you don't know his word and you keep the, the Bible shut, you will not have the boldness. But as you open the word and realize who you are and whose you are, it'll help you with where you're going. Everybody doing good? Say amen. All right. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Anybody got any burdens? We get a few, don't we? We get a little worried. We get a little concerned, a little, bur little, little uh, odds and ends, some burdens. Look at what it says. Cast your burden upon the Lord. And what? And he might sometimes, every now and then, only on Thursdays, will sustain you. It didn't say that. 
It said, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. There's a lot of shaky things in this world. Shaky relationships. Shaky jobs. Shaky, your car might not start. All these, a lot of different things, you know. But you don't have to be worried about your salvation when you know the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry, is God going to show up? You don't have to worry, is God in control? He's in control, amen? So what are we going to do? We're going to follow his path. We're going to follow his path. And I said, you know what? Even when we get over in the weeds, just crawl back to the main road, amen? The Lord will not leave you stranded. I ask this all the time. I go to different places to speak. I say, how many people have been following the Lord for five years? Ten years. I'm afraid it goes much higher, but anybody, 30 years. I know it's almost, it's, it's probably just amazing. Any, any, all these young folks in here, anybody following the Lord for 50 years? I'm going to stop there before I get in trouble. But you understand what I'm saying? Has the Lord ever left you out there? Has he ever left you on your own, Miss Karen? Never left. Things might not seem the way you want them. It might not go the way you want them at the time you want them, but I'm going to tell you what. I've never found anybody honestly answer that question and say anything other than what y'all have. Never. We might have walked away. It might not have went down the way we want it to, but I've never found anybody say, oh, yeah, man, the Lord sold me out. Right? Well, then you didn't know the Jesus that I know. You're not talking about the Lord of the Bible because he will never go against his word. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? Let's keep on going. So guess what that does? We should have confidence in the family tree of Christ. Do you believe that God cares for you and is involved in your everyday life? Do you believe he's, he's involved in everything? Do you, do, you know, as, as a dad, I like to know when, when, when Jesse and Steph comes home and it's harder when they get older because this is what I get. I say, how is it? It's the same old day now. I want to know. I don't need to correct. I don't need to do this or anything else. I want to know because why? I love you. I want to know what's happening, man. I want to be a part of that. I don't need to know, you know, anything silly, you know. I just want to, hey, man, I love you. How'd it go today? You know, what's going on? I like to have that open door. I like to be able to talk about it. I want you to come to your dad. Just like I told him, him and Thomas both. I said, I'd rather things mess up now when you're at home than you're out on your own. Me and mom can help maybe. We can still love you. I'm going to love you even if you live across the street or down the road or, you know, wherever. But if you're home while this time is here, my job as dad is to speak life into your life. How many parents have ever had that? Yeah, but everybody else is doing it. <laughs> and you say, you ain't everybody else's. My line used to be this. Yeah, I know, son. But I got one Thomas and one Jesse, and guess what? <laughs> this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. You know? And then sometimes I've seen over the years, well, yeah, 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 and this and that and all that. I said, yeah, you know what? Me and your mom stayed up so late last night trying to make your life terrible. I mean, I'm just, I'm exhausted. We were thinking, how, how can we make it miserable for them today, honey? And that's what they laughed too. Do you think your mom and dad is working against you? I don't think so. We do what we do because we love you. How much more has your heavenly father done? Whispering to you whispering to you. You know, like I said, speaking in different places, going different places, I go back over the years and I think of things and a lot of people are defined by different, different deal and I always get the same question. I talk about this a lot. You know, where'd you go to school? How many people's in your church? What's going on? This and that with denomination, all, all these different things. I get the whole deal and everything else and I just keep answering and smiling, answering and smiling, answering and smiling, everything else. And so not too long ago, that same thing happened. I was like, yeah, I got that on my shirt. You know, everybody, they want to size you up. And I was sitting there, I was getting ready to speak. I was getting ready to go up. And I said, Lord, why do they always ask me that stuff? Why do they ask me that stuff? And you know what the Lord spoke to me? You are mine. Woo! I was like, give me that thing. Let me preach. And they're, they're like, yeah, that's who I am. That's who I am. And guess where I'm going? Wherever he says. Because you know what? That's the deal. Man, don't let other people define you. 
Don't let your past mistakes define you. Know where you're going. Man, if you're walking with the Lord, who cares where you're heading? You're going in the right direction. The thing is, are you walking with the Lord? <laughs> you know? Where am I going? Wherever the Lord says. You know? Let's keep on walking. Lord, help me to be obedient to those things. Man, so today as we celebrate Father's Day, let's start where it really comes from. Our Heavenly Father. And let's not just wait. There he is now. That's great. Oh, I wish I had that. I'd love to talk to him. Can I talk to him? I would. Is it on? Can I talk? Let me talk to him. Hey, my friend, how you doing? Hello? <laughs> hey, you just called your dad to tell him Happy Father's Day, man? Yeah. Okay, well, hold on. He's right here. <laughs> you can't beat that. All right, man, that's awesome. We good? Hey, what can you say? Because I'm going to take a call if Thomas calls, right? Jesse already sent me a note. Thomas sent me a text. You know, we, we sometimes we think, you know, we, we, we're just being silly and stuff like that. Man, it ain't nothing like getting a call from your kid. Go ahead, Dad. Tell him you love him. <laughs> That's it. I did see something the other day. Somebody said something on the news that they said that the phone, uh, phone calls ramp up on Mother's Day, and on Father's Day, there's more collect calls than any other time. <laughs> That's what they said on the news. Don't get any ideas. But, they <laughs> you know, isn't it good just to be who God made you? Isn't it? Can't we just have a little bit of fun along the way? Why does everything got to be so stiff, everything else like that? Man, let me tell you, where are we going? Where are we heading? You know what? Wherever God wants us to. We have confidence in the family tree. Let's bring it on home with this. I said every family tree, like I started out, has a few lowing branches, a few dry leaves, a couple of little odds and ends and bark and that's, that's been beat up and everything else. But you can be the branch that bears much fruit. Somebody say amen. You can be the branch that bears much fruit. But you know what? We need to abide in him. We need to stay close to the vine. We need to keep our Bibles open. We need to keep our hearts open and in tune to the things of the Lord. Let me tell you today, we covered a lot of ground, a lot of scripture. I spent a lot of time looking those scriptures up because I wanted us to be encouraged. Let me tell you what. I am not some guy that don't realize that everybody's mom, dad situation, everything has been lovey-dovey, okay? I know there's been people that have been hurt. I know there's been people that have been wounded. I know there's mom and dads that have done some wounding and everything else. But I'm going to tell you what, today, today, honor your Heavenly Father and let Him work in your heart to bring restoration, to bring that peace. You hear me today? This is, this is about healing, man. This is about healing. This is about knowing whose you are. Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? And friends, do you know where you're going? You can know. <laughs> you can know. Open the word. Open your heart to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for Father's Day. We thank you for Mother's Day. We thank you for another day. But we're starting right here, right now, Lord, speaking to you. Father, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for all you do and all you've done and what is yet to come. Father, I pray for those that, that are, are, are hurting, uh, their hearts are hurting today because they're lost. I ask you to be with them. I ask you to touch them, Lord. I ask you to just have favor in their life, Lord. I ask you to slow our lives down just a little bit today so that we can recognize your voice that we can hear from our Heavenly Father. I pray that each one that has called upon the name of the Lord today hears that voice of, of the Lord Almighty. It says, you are mine. It's so liberating. It's so amazing for the Lord of the universe to say, you are mine. Here's the question. Have you asked him to be yours? Have you put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross. You say, buddy, you say that all the time. That's the only way to be saved. The gospel message is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our sin separates us from an awesome and holy God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I want to break it down. Lord, help to just make this message clear. 
and there's one way to heaven. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. How do we grab hold of that? Here's my question. If you die tonight, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Whoever that's tugging on their heart, I'm talking to you. Are you sure? Read the paper. Young folks die every day. Things happen every day, all the time. I read not too long ago, 250,000 people die a day. And many of them don't know the Lord. I don't know if we can reach all of them, but I tell you what, we got a handful here, and the Lord will take the message out to the highways and the hedges through the programs and things that they've got now. But today I'm talking to you. If you die tonight, you know for sure you go to heaven. You say, Pastor Buddy, I don't know. Let me help you with that. The Bible says when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Lord, I know that you have paid my sin debt in full. And Lord, help me to live for you today. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. The Lord says that he will seal you. He said that you are mine. He says, look at this. He said that there's no condemnation any longer. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Why would you run from that? Well, buddy, you just don't know my past. God does, and he still says, I'll save you. God does, he still, Jesus still came. As a matter of fact, that's why he came. Because we all need Jesus. Friends, don't leave here today. If you're listening to this, I don't know if it'll be today, next week, or whenever. This is the most biggest decision you'll ever make. I don't care if you live to be 100 years old, and I don't care if you're five years old today. If you understand what I'm saying to you, don't put this off. Pray from your heart and say, Lord, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you came and paid my sin debt in full on the cross. You poured out your blood to redeem me. And today I receive that. If that's you today, don't leave here without telling somebody, you know what, Pastor Buddy, I prayed that from my heart today. If that's you online, send, send us a note so we can continue to pray for you. And I want everybody to have a great Father's Day. Whether you're a mom, aunt, uncle, grandparent, whatever, let's celebrate the ultimate Father's Day, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Well, we're going to send you out with one of our uh, original songs. If you'd like to stay in and snap and clap, let's do it. We are going to praise the Lord. I'm ready to jam for Jesus. How about you guys? One, two, three, four. Do not a
to our online church family, and then we'll jump on in and see what else the Lord's got. Friends, I hope you guys enjoyed the message today. Please share uh, the message. I uh, love all everybody today. Uh, celebrate Father's Day with your Heavenly Father today and every day. Hope you guys had a good time. We love you. Bye.